What's up everyone? This is a part 9. Right? For the Cinderella phenomenon. So let's start revealing the rock first. What happened? What happened? I want to know what happened, Rod. Tell me why it's nothing but a heartbreak. Tell me why it's nothing but a mistake. Okay. Today is the first time that I'm leaving the palace on a day off. Usually, I choose to stay inside. Where's the other server always leave to go home? I never see any reason to leave since it always be my home. And the merchants has never been home. Besides, it is not as if I want to return. Not after the conversation we all shared last time. Thus, I have spent most of my day asking questions about Mother Ring. Inquiring when and where I can. The opinion do not surprise me. The one that keeps surprising me right now is how the land is keep occur. Okay. I was so scared of her. One more move and she have thrown in the and have you thrown in the prison. My tongue will always wait for her to pass by before leaving their house. She was a tyrant. The kingdom is a better place now that she's gone. There is no reason for them to lie to me. The more I hear, the more my own life makes sense to me. I am know now why the king never seemed to love mother and why the people hate her. And the reason people look at me with such fear. However, it has been months since I've been glad at the public. In the public. If there isn't one good thing that this curse did to me, it is that allow me to travel around the town without being noticed. As Viorica's shot come in view, my thoughts shift to the reason. I have left the palace in the first place. If Rob will not tell me anything, I will have to ask Viorica. She must be related in some way to his curse. I paused outside the door to the toy shop. With a deep breath, I pushed the door open. Welcome. The moment she see me, her expression become confused. Oh. You are Princess Maid, you said, wasn't it? I know at her. You never come here alone before. What can I help you with? I wanted to ask you something. It's about Prince Rod. Prince Rod? Did something happen to him? Is he okay? He's fine. She sighed with relief. Then why is it what you like to ask? I just wanted to know if you knew anything about Prince Rod's sudden muteness. Viorica stared at me for a few moments before she shake her head. I only know that it happened soon after I met my fiancé, Desimon. What's the reason you have for asking? Well, I tried to take a plausible explanation for this and immediately consider Emily. Viorica is Emily's best friend. Surely she will be really help if she knew I was doing this for Emily. Sure. Prince Rod had been very quiet recently. Princess Emily had been worried sick about him, but he refused to say anything even to her. I have been trying to gather information that might be useful, might be helpful in discerning the cause. I stared at her expectantly, hoping that my guests hold nothing but determination. Finally, Viorica smiled. She's lucky to have a dedicated friend like you. I'm still not as accustomed to the fact that Emily considered me as friend. Before she became the princess, I was half confident. We were like sister. But now she's living in the castle. We no longer have a luxury of spending so much time together. I'm worried about her constantly. Even around me, I'm always tend to keep her problem to herself. At first, she doesn't like to bother other people with them. It's hard not to agree. With the way Emily was always smiling before, I never thought she had any problem in her life. Hey! Human man! Wait thought now, no problem with you! It always only recently that I discovered that she was hiding all her loneliness and spent behind a smile. Is it really that she befriends someone who cares so much about her? I don't know if I can be much help, but I'll tell you what I know. It will help Emily. To start with, I know exactly sure how everything changed, but it all happened so suddenly. All I know is after the night I met this man, our relationship changed. At the first, she still smiled. But recently, 
is a bit avoiding. What happened between the two of you? The night you met your fiancé? Nothing. Ron and I did not meet on that day. Me, Prince Rod wasn't there? No, but so after what happened that night, Rod grew distant. You know, you know, she's no, you, you don't, you don't have to like, pretend to be so stupid about this thing, okay? You know what happened. As a woman, if I see that happen, I know what happened. It was a stormy night and I was heading back home. I took the road by the river bank because it was the shortest road. It was a foolish of me. The road was slippery and full of mud. I lost my footing and fell into the water. The wave was strong and I was certain I was going to drown. I don't remember what happened in the darkness of the water. Only then when I woke up my head was in decimal land. That was the first time we met, but not the last. He carried me home, and he become by every day as I was recovering. And then he come to visit even after I recovered. I tried not to get my hope up too much, but what could this nobleman see in me? A mere commoner. But I still end up falling in love with him. You have no idea how happy I was when he said he loved me too. It was a dream come true. Of course, every good dream of marrying a prince, it was all of the fairy tale I read as a child. Not all was all related to Rod, how this relate to his curse. You see, your relationship with Prince Rod changed after the night. What happened? Viorica sighed. I told Anne and Rod about Decimus after the incident, and was happy that two of us had fallen in love, but Rod didn't say much of him. Then when I noticed that he started growing distant, and when I realized that he also lost his voice. He still won't tell me anything, but I figured that he was... Her voice failed, but I know that she referring to the curse. So Rod lost his voice shortly after Viorica met Desmond? The mermaid curse has something to do with the tail. The little mermaid treated her voice for late so that she could be with her prince, but that's not only who find the prince charming was Viorica. Rod Curse might have something to do with Desmond and Fiorica. He became distant with her finding out about Desmond. Why? Then there is fact that he still spoke to Fiorica, even if he was distant. It only when he found out the the wedding that he became so cold. I found I was to agonize my thought. How did it get to be this way? I'm so sorry, you said, but I need to close the shop now. Sorry for the story. I know it's nothing to do with Rob, but it was after the incident, he began to act strangely. I don't think I was much help, but I shake my head. You have told me what you could. Verica walked me to the door, opening it so that both of us can step out onto the street together. Oh. You just thought for a while and suddenly all things is night. I really hope that you're able to help Emily and Rob. I hope so, too. Did you see Ophelia the other day? I kept a sight of two noble women sitting on the bench together, not too far away from the toy shop. They are referring to Ophelia with her title, her disrespect. Who could have thought a peasant like her could almost look like a royalty? But her dress, as a queen she ought to be wearing silk rather than satin. I do not know why I bristled at their comment. Everyone is entitled to their opinion but the fact that they were speaking so blindly in public means they have little worry being overheard. I'm still not sure what the king saw in her. Well, do you know what they said about ladies lacking natural beauty? But Taylor like must lie in other, more persuasive area. She must be very persuasive indeed. It shows the king so it will quite to marry her. What the? What? As the two women left, I feel something not, something hot begin to burn in my stomach. Verica take a sharp breath beside me. Since I become a maid in palace, Ophelia has been nothing but kind to me. A mere servant. She has all the right to flaunt her status and yet she remains humble. I know now that is what everyone in the palace love her. Common woman like her only keep a man attention for so long. 
I stop working to work then without thinking. Who said? I wouldn't. You have no right to say those things about the queen. The two women are clearly surprised at my interruption. Both them glaring. And you have no right to eavesdrop on us. Eavesdropping? Anyone could have heard you. Their mouth fall open. One old woman looked at me for a long time, then sneered suddenly, as if something has occurred to her. I thought you looked familiar. You are the crown prince's personal maid. I see you always following her around when she is in town. This is none of your business, girl. Why do you care so much for our opinion? Uh, oh, perhaps. It's because the girl idolized the queen, thinks she might also go from red to riches. What? Oh, you do have a point. They stand at everyone's door with me. Do you want the prince for yourself, girl? If a commoner can become a queen, it's not to be difficult to imagine yourself as a princess, isn't it? How foolish. You better off dreaming smaller dream, girl. You better off dreaming smaller dream, girl. The love and irritation in my chest plays into a full of anger. Is this what Ophelia has been dealing with the past years? She has been treated so cruelly when she has done nothing but love the king. And I also ridicule her just like that. I force myself to look at the cruel woman as I move my hand to the pen then hanging around my neck. I was just as cruel as them. I barely feel very good hand as she rests it against my shoulder. Lisette, let it go. Her Majesty wouldn't want you to do this. But I can't just let this two women talk about her feet. Talk about a feeling like this. I pull away from Viorica and stand firm. The queen has a good heart. She is far more noble than either of you could ever hope to be. I think back to the other time I cried to her. A fellow could have, could have easily reprimanded me for my behavior. She had the right on my stepmother, yet she had been nothing but kind to me. A fellow never got angry at me, even despite my treatment toward her and her family. She always treat others with kindness even when they are cruel to her. Judging for the bitterness in your accusation, it seems like you jealous of her. How pathetic. The other woman marched toward me and free hands instinctively moved to her hole. To hold her and just before her palm reached my cheek. I will not tolerate insult toward the king. And uh, toward the queen. A soft light emanated from the pen that I can only stare at in shock. I got another good deed by defending Ophelia. The woman snatched her hand away. How dare the peasant like you turn away to us? You have no manners? I could ask you the same. What happened to yours? Oh, how dare you? Don't you know who we are, girls? I will say you pay for your impertinence. Our world have far more weight than you ever will. I will go to the king myself to tell him about how rude you were. I can pass on my myself. Oh, my little bro, you come save me like a hero again. I think I see what walking toward us. His expression cold. The two noblemen has it recursing. Your, your highness. The noble woman turned pale as rock eyes fall on them. Actually, we have important dinner engagement. Y yeah, we do. The two noble women could see before quickly departing. Why are you doing here without your guard? You... What trouble have you gotten yourself into now? Don't tell him! Don't tell him! It's nothing. If you refuse to tell me what happened, I will have to assume that the noble woman was telling the truth about you. Lucy has done nothing wrong. In fact, I think Lucy only did what you or Emily would have done had you heard the awful thing those women were saying about your mother. What? She stood up for the queen when she didn't have to. Then why did you say so? Would you believe me? Ah. Drop, drop, drop his gifts for mine. You never gave me chance to believe you, did you? Uh, I don't know. It's just a sad thing. It's just so weird. Don't say it like that. Don't play it like that. They would have believed me. How am I to know what? To know that? 
Ro is like a walking contradiction. Ro glanced up again, this time look at Viorica. We shouldn't keep you from returning home, Viorica. I take Ray back to the palace. Viorica eyes narrow, and she looked ready to say something, but Ro has already reached out for my hand to pull me along behind him. When we were outside of Viorica's shop, Rod stopped, really releasing my hands and he turned to me, face me. Did you really think I would refuse to believe you if you told me the truth? You never liked me. You have no reason to believe me. Rod sighed, running a hand through his hair. I told you that I would help you break your curse, right? That offer alone should be enough for you to know that I... Oh! Rod turned away suddenly looking embarrassed that I don't dislike you anymore. What? Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> you expecting me to just assume that? How can I know unless you admit that absolutely clear? Well, I'm making clear now. I... I understand. Anyway, thank you for standing up for my mother. It seems like you don't require my assistance in breaking your curse after all. He gestured to my necklace. Congratulations on your second date, Ray. Eh, you said. Suddenly tongue tied. I find myself looking everywhere but at Rod. When I have once again gathered my sense, I turn to the road. My eyes narrow as I recognize the past we are on. This is not the way to the palace. No, it isn't. We're going to the marching. Why? Because I was on my way there before I was forced to take a detour because someone was drawing attention to herself. Hey! What? But Rod ignored me and we walked the rest of the way to the marching in silence. Was is the only person in the reception room when we entered? Prince Rod? Princess? It's a little late for two of you to be here. I mean to be here earlier. Is Lady Prophet here? What's not? I'll go get her. Wait here. As soon as Walsh leave us alone, Rod turned to me, his expression rigid. Rod stepped closer and grabbed my shoulder. What? 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 Why? Why so angry? Why so angry? I wasn't able to say earlier, but we are out in public. Well, because we are out public, but you should know how much danger you're in now. And yet you thought it was okay to go around on your own? It was my day off today. It is not unreasonable for me one, mi one time for myself. Time for yourself? Don't you understand the meaning of be careful? Why would you do something as foolish as going out in town alone? I cannot help but bristle at his tone. Why are you so angry? Because you wrote trail off and look away. Because you are family. Oh! Ah! Clap! Clap! <laughs> so you finally acknowledge me as family? I noticed his cheeks turning red. To be honest, you are less of family member and more just important. Oh! Ah, uh, you put me there. You put me there. Okay. Okay. Important? Because all that you do for Emmeline, you're important to my sister. He looked uncomfortable as he said the word, and I cannot help but marvel at his embarrassment. Why are you so embarrassed? But Rod changed the topic as he turned away from me. What were you with, Viorica? Uh, I can only think of one reason you speak to her. My curse. You thought you find out about my curse through her? I shrug. I can only assume that your curse has something to do with Viorica. Hmm. I look up when Rod says something, then stare at the curious sight before me. He has taken Sebi off his shoulder and holding the door in the hand, away from his face. The two seem engaged in some silent conversation. Then gently Sebi speak what I can hear. This is the right thing to do. You need to you need to let her help you, Rod. Right? Uh, Rod bite down on his 
He slowed it before briefly closing his eyes. Eventually, he returned Sebi to his usual spot on his shoulder and turned to me. Fine. You're stubborn and you're not going to quit investigating unless I tell you, aren't you? You're right. Viorica is the reason I was I know! And what I was assumed is true! Okay, now I, I eat my own word. Let's sit down on the seat. On the seat. How to say this? Thing? Well, you can just cushion, sofa, a chair. What's set there? What is set, sit there? Sit, what's, what's that? So hard to pronounce, too. And let's add the heavy side. His eyes are far away as he speaks to me. I was in love with Viorica, but I wasn't brave enough to tell her. I just swallowed her around like a, some kind of puppy. One day Verica hasn't come and it was very, very heavily, so I went out to look for her. I found her walking along the bank of the river. I called out to her to tell her to be careful, but I didn't think she ever heard me. She slipped and rock swallowed. She crashed one of his hand into a fist. She fell into the river. I dived in after her. I somehow managed to get both of us onto the river, but I didn't look like Viorica was breathing. I didn't know what to do. I started panic. I ran off to try and help, but I couldn't find anyone in the storm. When I returned, she was gone. I rushed to her house and a doctor was already there to tend her along with Desmond. Her guest is vacant as he knew. When Viorica began to fall in love with Desmond, I felt helpless. Did you not tell her that you were the one that saved her? Why would I? Viorica was happy, believing that she and Desmond were fit to be together. I couldn't do that to her. But surely if you told her, Rod interrupted me. I want the people I love to be happy. I don't care if their happiness cause me pain. I rather better alone. Instead of bringing down those around me. I just asked as I wash her shoes. I never would have guessed that Rod would be so strapless. But that didn't stop me from thinking that I could still make her love me instead. I decided to become what I thought Verica wanted the most, the prince charming of the fairy tale she so adored. So I asked the witch to turn me into one. She stole my voice in exchange. Only then did I realize that she inflicted the fairy tale curse upon me, the mermaid curse. The next day, the king turned up uh, at our house, proclaiming that he'd be looking for my mother for years that he never stopped loving her. Then the king remarried my mother. I became a prince. It was just as a wish promise. But it didn't matter. I didn't say it when I made the deal with the witch, but I couldn't be blind to it forever. Blind? Blind? Blind. Desima and Verica really do love each other. They make each other happy. Nothing I can do will exchange that. But I... And... Prince Rod? Oh. Perfect pose in her trap when she sees me. Have I interrupted something? No. Rod moved over to Perfect but he stopped to glance back at me. I won't be long. Perfect looked at Rod and then at me. Her face puzzled, but she just said say a word as Rod and her leave the room. Second deed, dude! Second deed! One more! <laughs> I did not get a chance to discuss Rod's curse with him later that night. Nor did I get a chance to speak with Perfect and Delora about my suspicion of the Alcafo. They go by day, but I find myself overwhelmed by the preparation for the ball. They become more frantic every day, making it difficult for me to have any time to speak with anyone. Eventually, I decided to write a letter containing my suspicion of the orchestra. I tell Puffet and Delora that I believe he might be which they are looking for. I also add that I believe Fritz might somehow be involved, though my suspicions are not as well founded with him. To me, made the words, he went and disappeared. I have not heard anyone mention his name here for a long time. Oh. I crossed the pool from my thought when I collect with someone the liner I had been holding scattered over the floor. 
Excuse me, I did not. I look up and my voice trail off when I see who I bump into. Oh, Mitros. Actually, he is the witch. Believe me. I believe what I assume. I eat my own word. Lost in your thought? So Mitros look at me, something real in his smiling eyes. I suppose those are learning the queen asked for. Yes, please excuse me. I begin gathering up the lining, but as I reach out for one, Sumitra speak it up first. Allow me to help you. I'll be fine. But this is partially my fault. Let me assist you. I bite my lead I do not protest as Sumitra helped me gather the rest of the lining. I contact contemplating my schedule for the rest of the day when I realized that some matrix had been stalking. I'm supposed to have any idea who that maid is. Maid? There is a cold amusement in the Sumitra's case. Surely you have heard the rumor of young prince having seen a royal maid somewhere around the town. Oh. There is... Okay. Rumor has it that Prince Rod has found love among the common folk, much like his royal stepfather has. What? With a maid? As far as I'm aware, the only man he has been out of time with has been... I face as the major straight, patting down his clothes for dust, before holding out some lining to me. If it's true, I wish him the best, though I wish he would be more discreet about it. Discreet about it. A royal scandal is the last thing we need right now. I shakily take the liner from Sumitra's as he inclined his head to me. Have a good day, Lucette. I walk down I walk to the dining hall in the hedge, my mind will whirling with the implication of what Sumitra's just said. I sure it was just noble woman who spread this rumor. Ah, oh, Lucette, thank you for bringing this to me. Just leave them on the table. I could see after placing the lining down as a command. If that is all, Lucette, I shake at the tone of Ophelia's voice. When I look up, I see her expression is carefully still. I'm about to ask you something that you might not want to answer, but I very much hope you will. I will answer if I can. Good. Ophelia said as she sit down on one of the dining table chair and fold her arm on her lap. I've been trying to ignore its simple because it is mostly full, but I can't help my curiosity. I wanted to ask your relationship with- ah! <laughs> Oh my god, Ophelia! It's not like that! Oh my god. It's something wrong. What? I understand you and Rob were together in town a few days ago. Do you want to tell me what happened? I think... He just explained the situation. If Ophelia is asking me about this rumor, then I can only imagine what sort of story this rumor made out. Prince Rod was just on his way somewhere when he chanced upon him. When he saw that I was in trouble with two noble women, he stopped to intervene. That is all. Rod said the same thing. Then, why did you ask me, Your Majesty? To see what you thought about the situation. I don't think anyone should to say to get a stay in your relationship with Rod is. My relationship with Rod? I like you, they said. Oh! <gasps> we got mother blessing! I'm certain that you're good for Rod. If I had my way, I would let him call you. Oh! Oh my god, Ophelia! Don't put it like that, it made me blush. Oh. I put my head in my chair, I jump over my word. The prince and I are not in relationship. A member of royal family cannot end up with a servant. Where there's love, there is hope. Good job, mother. Social status should just stop you from being happy, he said. Then, what about Feather Art and Rod's step-sister? I bite down on the statement fiercely. 
I already know what rule I am playing here and I cannot break it. Ophelia looked at me with complicated expression before she sighed. I will not push you on this any further. But be careful, Lucette. Your closeness with my son and daughter has not gone unnoticed. I do not believe in limited relationship be because of one status, but I understand. I could see as I must go the dining hall entrance. What do Ophelia mean by the closeness not going unnoticed? Later that day, as I'm waiting outside the throne room for Emmeline to finish one of her classes, two men walked toward me and stopped in front of me. That's sad, isn't it? Where is it? I already finished all the tests for the day. Well, I'm sure you have. Probably rushed through all of them so that you could hang around the priest and the princess all night. Tonight. You're the one who give me the... Role of being the lady in waiting. What you mean? The head housekeeper will be giving you a light to load so you can afford the time to play around, huh? I blink at it confused. I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't play dumb. All the servants know what you have been doing. Just because your princess and Mullen person are me doesn't make you better than the rest of us. Nobody say that! Nobody say a thing like that. Ah, uh, be careful not get to be for your good, Lucette. Are you threatening me? What if we are? I'll be very disappointed in you. Evelyn! To the rescue! Pr Princess Evelyn! Emily moves to stand beside me. Disapproving expression on her face. I did not expect such a pretty cruelty from two of you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Your Highness. You really do have a talent for getting yourself into trouble. Hey! Hey! You, what you think, huh? What you think? <laughs> Excuse me again, huh? Excuse me again. Wait, wait, the light, the light. Okay. Rock paused briefly, his eyes meeting mine for a second before he looked at the maid. Don't you have better thing to do than bully my sister, mate? We apologize, your highness, we'll be on our way. The two men ran off. Emily turned to look at me. Are you okay? I'm about to answer when I noticed that Rock abruptly walking away from us. I frowned at his back. He only just thought being nice to me and now he back to acting as if I don't exist. What did I do? Emily put her hand on my back and gently pushed me forward. You want to ask him something, right? I could see your eyes. Emily smiled at, as she pushed the door to the throne room open. I have few more questions to ask my teacher. I'll be here a while. But... But she disappeared into the throne room before I can finish. I glanced at the hallway road just disappeared down and then back at the throne room. My thought was to get it in the forge mess until I made my decision. Wait! At the sound of my approaching footstep, Rod turned and looked at me. He called but just did not say anything. Tell him! Tell him! The words spit out on me before I can even think of them. What have I done now to make you angry with me? Nothing. He turned away and I glared as I followed closely behind him. You expect me to believe that? You can at least look at me while I'm talking to you. I reached out his hand his elbow to his elbow and pulled him back so he's facing me. Rod. But the word died in my throat where I see expression on his face. His face is red. He refused to look at me. Oh my god, shit! Oh! Oh! Another diamond! My surprise caused me to release him. Rod quickly turned around and began to walk away. I left to stay dumbly after him. What's wrong with him? Normally he is not afraid to speak his mind. I thought as I feel dull at each. Throbbing somewhere deep in my chest. What is this? Why do I feel sad? 
Normally, Rod Disney does not make me feel like this. And yet now, I'm really so sad that he does not want to speak with me. I shake my head and take a deep breath to steal my mind. It is better not to think about it. Oh, that's the end of the chapter 7. And we're about to go to chapter 8 where the ball is coming. So, yeah, I guess this is all for chapter... I mean, part... What part? But nine, right? So, I guess see you guys later. To the for uh, see you guys later at the next episode. The feeling is blooming. The love is in the air. We just waiting what's going to happen for this love. So yeah, see you guys later. My job.